Yo, what's good, guys? It's your boy Chosen Pharaoh back at another reaction video. And right now, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna react to. I don't even know how long this video came out, but it doesn't even matter. I'm making my own algorithm ish content of what I want to react to. Um, anyways, if you guys would like to request any other videos that you would like for me to react to, please comment that down below. But I am now reacting to whoa, 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 whoa. Um, the most awkward interviews in hip hop history to square root two. I got that. Um, um, Breakfast Club edition. Here we go. Got my boy L O G I C. Yeah, hit me with that ad after my video was already up. It's crazy. So let's get straight to it. At number 10, we have an artist who's been disrespected by most hip-hop media outlets. And The Breakfast Club might have left the worst impression of them all. During his interview, Charlamagne appeared to have it out logic from the moment he stepped into the studio. After weathering remarks about his father being a crackhead to accusing logic of being homophobic, Damn. things went from bad to worse when he took it. Well, I've been, like, I ain't gonna be sitting here and be like, yo, I'm the biggest Logic fan. Which... Like I'm, I am a Logic fan, but I I just want to say I've been a Logic fan since Numbers. If you know, you know, bro. Like to steer the discussion towards one of his family's darkest moments, and in our opinion, the most awkward thing to ever occur on the show. Who the hell just is this? Oh man. Hey, yeah, Char bro, Charlem, bro. I swear, like he is not the most favorite person, bro. But like, if I ever, like, when I ever go on the Breakfast Club, bro, like. I'm going to see straight Charlemagne the Fraud. Because that's my legit last name, bro. Like, he'd be an ass. Like, he's such an asshole, bro. Years later, and still left with lasting wounds from this tasteless moment, Logic later doubled down about the toll it took on him in a genius interview. When he basically kind of called me homophobic without even watching an interview, and I was like, I didn't even say that. And then for him to just out his mouth be like, yo, who, your sister? And I actually held on to that for like six years. And I was yeah. like, this isn't healthy. And I'm talking to my therapist about it. And I, I, put, I put it on record. Where Logic was at the mercy of the hosts, our number nine entry made it clear that she was calling the shots from the outset. While on a promotional tour for her second album, Nicki Minaj stopped by the show, and they were so eager to please her that they even bought her breakfast, which, in keeping with the tone of the interview, she threw back in Charlamagne's face. Not even the right turn that I eat. I don't eat this one. I eat the real crispy one. I don't eat that brand. From there, things went from bad to worse, with Nicki calling out the hosts for not doing their research and familiarizing themselves with her new album before the interview. Did you see my review yet, Angela? Yes, I did. But you didn't buy it? Not yet. Okay, you a hater. Well, it's love to break records for so let's go. Y'all need to stop trying to break records and start and start listening to people's music. Why y'all don't have the songs queued up, though? I want to hear High School. I want to hear Hell Yeah. I wanna this hear is back when Charlamagne had, um, fucking... When is when is his his skin his yeah. skin didn't match up with each other? You don't even know these songs. You guys do not. But that's it. fucked up though. Like I know this is like a while ago, like a minute ago. But that's rude, bro. Like that's damn, son. Really don't support me. I don't understand why I'm coming to radio and and y'all don't even have my songs. But that's the main focus of the kid coming to the radio. Nah. When a, when the kid come to the radio. Nah. The kid the comes kid to hear her songs on the radio. That's right. Ever, Ever since, since Nikki hasn't, hasn't set foot on the show. show. Right. Charlemagne is often the aggravator. There was, was one particular incident where it was his usually mild-mannered co-host, DJ Envy, that wanted all the smoke. Here at number eight, we have the showdown between DJ Envy and Jesus and Mary, which saw DJ Envy... These are my niggas, bro. ...to discuss his infidelity... Boy, that's from my hood. Mary's hot take. This man went on a TV show with five women to discuss how he was cheating on his wife. Like, what are you doing? I felt like a letdown. I felt like a failure. I was Rashawn at home, but in the streets I was DJ Envy. So it was two different people. I didn't know DJ Envy. You know the DJ Envy. Check it out. You owe my wife an apology. We owe your wife an apology. What do we do? When you insinuated that she was there for the check. That's what you said exactly, I heard. Since 15. 
before I had a dollar. She okay. was making more money than me. So to insinuate that she was there for a check is a disrespect to me. Okay, can I, okay I'm sorry. I thought we was cool. I thought, I thought we was, was cool. cool. I thought that. Even though the Bodega boys seemed eager to make their apologies, it wasn't enough. As before long, they stormed like, what out of the studio. Please put the camera on these chair right now. At least they, they, they apologized, nigga. Among the most iconic moments in the show's history, Jesus and Meryl would later send Dead be a gift, which deaded the beat. At number seven, we have Donnell Rock. As is often the case when Rowling shows up, the line between what's real and what's done oh, this is, this is, this is usually blurred. Yet, despite this, there was one instance where Donnell clearly thought that the pair found humor in a situation that was anything but funny. And the way this book came about is because my dad passed away about a year ago. And he starts straight laughing. What? What? You laughing? <laughs> Over the years, there's been plenty of moments where it seems as though a fight could break out at any moment. The thing is, you have someone as masterful at irritating people as Charlemagne, you get situations such as Friedrich Starr's since deleted appearance on The Breakfast Club, where he threatened to attack Charlemagne throughout the entire interview. But where Friedrich lost his temper, Beanie Siegel's approach to handling Charlemagne was way more terrifying, and is the number six spot in our countdown. Be quiet, Charlemagne. Shut up. Push up every man. You know, by any right mind, going to stand straight in front of me. And square off, we gonna catch an L. I do this. Why you keep harping on that? We answer that. Don't talk out your neck. If you saying you want unity, stop keep doing that, man. Facts. No personality, man. You Facts, don't come bro. From world, but you wouldn't understand my world. You don't know nothing about it. Stop, stop running your mouth. Dang. And like that's one of the reasons what made me like fucking hate this nigga, bro. Cause it's like him having that name. And then, like, ha like having that be my real last name, and then when I tell people that shit, it always go back to this nigga, and it gets me so heated, bro. Cause like, my somebody went to war. That's not even your fucking name, bro. Your job is to play games. Play with something safe, man. Don't play with me. Although this isn't exactly the worst experience she'd have on the show, one occasion that saw Angela Yee weathering a storm of abuse came when singer and love and hip-hop star K. Michelle confronted her on air. Due to Angela engaging in a previous interview with Uncle Murda where he had some unsavory things to say about K. Michelle's, you know what? K. Yeah. spent her appearance on the show absolutely dismantling Yee for what she saw as shady female conduct. Mm. Most of my technical aptitude was just playing video games. ECPI University is helping you uh. You brought that back up. You had already addressed it. You sitting over there giggling and kikiing. I have to go back and see who brought it up. I did you say, why did you say that? You brought it up. You sat there and chuckled. You did that. And you don't know what that might have done to me. You brought that up. Not him. Not him. And at the end of the day, I ain't with you for that. So let's move on. She hopped right in and continued on me. So if you don't want nobody to do it to you, don't, Don't do, do it, it to them. them. Your little pet about, about my, and, and if, if it, it smell like a glade candle or a fish market or not, that, that little is some pet from a woman. Pet. To Michelle, Angela's decision to feed into Uncle Murder's gossip was a poor show of sisterhood. But over the years, Angela has suggested that it was all orchestrated by Kay for a love and hip hop scene, rather than genuine animosity. That said, that's nothing in comparison to number four on our list. Back in 2011, Ray J and Fabulous got into a scuffle in Las Vegas. As news of the fight began to surface, Ray, who still seemed to end up from the altercation, phoned the Breakfast Club to explain what really happened. In the process, he gave birth to the hilarious term, booty goons. All I'm saying is if you got Fab number to send a picture of his face right now. Did you know that on average, there are around five nah, car accidents? Nah, They're the large medical mouth. You get a whole legal yeah, team yeah, ready to help you fight for long ad. Now, be right now. That's pound 529. I swear to God, he's running for me right now. I had a hundred fools outside of Moon right now. He never left the club. He was scared up in there. He just to call the police. So when you hit him, what did he do, right? Nothing. He fell back because he's a sucker. That whole team. You can't smack him over the phone, right? on the phone and they go, that. Talk to him, right? A legendary rant that's credited for saving the Breakfast Club from being canceled due to poor ratings. This was a bittersweet moment for Ray J, as this damaged his public persona for over a decade. But if you thought that was bad, we have number three in the bizarre moment where Gucci Man alluded to Angela wanting to sleep with him, and Angela vehemently denied. Hey, you smash Angela Yee? Okay, okay. Of course not. Why is it of course not? I'm saying, come on, guys. She didn't try. She didn't try. She's a oh, okay. That is a lie. Okay. That is a lie. <laughs> no, 
Oh, that's what that means. Oh, that's what that means. Good boy. According to Guwap, this incident led to him being banned from the Breakfast Club. And then what? In 2019 solo interview with Charlamagne, he didn't hold back. I reject you. I don't want you. What you mad about? But don't ever try to act like you didn't do it. You did. She said she feel like you disrespected her. She disrespected herself. Although Charlamagne later told DJ Vlad that he apologized for allowing Gucci to insult her, Angela wasn't as happy to let bygones be bygones and clarified that away from the cameras, they were no longer friends. While Charlemagne often feels comfortable enough to offend guests with impunity, one man who proved But then again, then again, Charlamagne just threw it in the air too. But then she, mm, whatever, I don't even with care all that much. Among the most powerful figures in hip hop, the mogul made it evident that he wouldn't tolerate disrespect. Or as Birdman put it, well, he was standing on, well, he was standing on business. Facts. All drill, y'all, stop playing my name. When my name come up, respect it. All drill, y'all. Stop playing with my name. I ain't gonna say it no, no more. more. Never Shit. went back down. Charlamagne immediately brought the conversation back towards the beef once the mics were live. And after another fiery exchange, Birdman and his goons stormed out. He done cursed us out. Get it off the chest, Birdman. I want to see you. I want to talk to you, man, in your face. Absolutely. You understand me? I knew a few places with that. I could have pulled up, but I didn't thought that was gangster. I wanted to come look in your face like a man and tell you how I feel. If it was an issue, you don't feel me. I just come to let y'all know stop. Put some respect on my name. I'm, I'm the radio guy. guy. Why pull up on the radio guy? I don't act tough with the radio guy. Hey, are we all finished or y'all done? I ain't got no more talk. Among the most legendary moments to have ever taken place on the show, the fallout led Young Thug to call out Charlemagne in one of the most sinister ways. Charlemagne, torture you, boy. You gonna beat that? Considering the prison time looming over Thug's head, he might have meant it. However, what happens when you decide to relentlessly clown your guests for the entirety of the interview? Well, that's we exactly what Charlamagne did for our number bro. one spot. Five years removed from her breakout hit, Lip Gloss, yes, Charlamagne made Mama, Mama's bro. appearance on the show as an opportunity he to come He did out. her grimy, bro. Like, I love Lil Mama, bro. Like... Even bro, after that whole like um thing with um um Alicia Keys and Jay Z, bro, like she was just feeling the New York spirit and wanted to be on that stage, bro. Like he did a dirty, bro. About her failed music career, as well as her delusional decision to storm Alicia Keys and Jay Z's performance. But your actual it may have been a bad decision to do that, but she just felt proud, bro. And for years, bro, like that shit was fucked up, bro. And then this asshole. I guess some kind type of talent. Like you did have a little buzz going on. Definitely one. have talent. But and what have you done lately, though? This is a, a what have you done for me what type you, of industry. What and if your face was the Bible, it would be the Old Testament. You gotta show proof by actions and deeds, not words and lip service. People know you can play yourself, walking up on stage with Jay Z and Alicia Keys. Shout out to seriously. That's the truth. Chill out, Jurassic Park, Tyrannosaurus Rex, prehistoric face. As he continued to insist that her moment had passed and mocked her appearance, bro, things eventually devolved to the point where Lil Mama was left in tears. I don't, I'm not here to say what I'm gonna do. And I hate um, niggas me and her as me too. Like. My mother was dying of cancer. That right there alone is a struggle. That's hard. That's tough for anybody. But my music will speak for itself. My actions will speak for itself. My mother will be proud. My father will be proud. And nobody can stop me. Period. I think you got a real story to tell, and I think you should tell it. And stop focusing on the gimmicks and stop letting people but make you out to be a caricature. But you're the person that's promoting that. You're yeah. supposed to be a person that's from my community, a hip hop community that's supposed to support the youth. Shortly after the incident, this beef, along with Charlamagne's beef with other guests on the show, would lean to one of the most historic moments in hip hop media. Good, my G. Can I get a drop? I remember that. Yeah, they violated. Let's get a drop. Yeah, send his ass I'm running, show bro. You how to start a land I remember from that. In just four hours. Damn, you that was a minute ago, bro. That was it. That was last. That was. I think that's the end of the video, y'all. Um. Pause that shit, pause that shit. The ad won't even oh I'ma mute it. I'ma mute it cause this shit is Yo, if you guys enjoyed that video, make sure you hit that like button. If you guys would like to re um request any other videos, any similar videos, any any other videos down below in the comments down below, please do that for your boy. Um and 
Yeah, bro. I'm going to catch you guys next time. It's your boy, Chosen Pharaoh. I'm out, y'all.